Hey everybody, welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. I hope you're having a fabulous day wherever in the world you happen to be. And I know it's been a minute since I've had regular videos coming out, but I have been streamlining my use of my OBS video broadcasting software. If you look around, a little bit of a new format going on, but also more importantly, uh, it's allowing me to potentially have videos that are still, you know, look relatively nice. I say relatively given my limited hardware, but uh, allow me to still put in the intros, even make cuts while I while I do the video, and without having to upload it to my editing suite and then re-exporting the file. What that means in English is I don't have to wait like two hours for each video to get it up and then have this huge like 1.2 gigabyte file that on my Southeast Asian Wi-Fi takes like another two hours to upload. So this could potentially streamline my videos, allow me to produce a lot more content so long as the content is up here in the old noggin and I can think of things to talk about. So this is useful for a, an ambitious goal I have to, I don't know, maybe get 5,000 subscribers for this channel, maybe someday 10,000. And I know a video that has, uh, or a channel that has eight videos of a cat playing with a dog. Who Can you imagine a cat and a dog getting along together? It's unbelievable. You know, I know a channel like that can get 50,000 subscribers in like six days. So, you know, so given what we're talking about, it's a lot more challenging. But, you know, I'm, I'm brainstorming new things, new stuff I'm coming out with, as well as those podcast episodes were approved by iTunes. So I will um, probably next time have a link to the new Afterlife Topics iTunes page, which I think is a pretty cool step forward when it comes to getting this information out which is basically you know what i'm doing here it's my job the job i made for myself is to get accurate hopefully accurate afterlife data out for people to figure out and help them figure out what the heck is going on with this whole like you know uh, dying business which is uh kind of a big deal because it affects all of us so on that note let's take a look at today's subject which is a post on the Afterlife Topics Facebook group, which, by the way, um, I've now been banned from three times. My account has been locked out, that is. So I am once again back in the group for who knows how long. It seems like it's a, week, it's a weekly thing now that I'm getting kicked off. But if you um, happen to be uh, on the group when I'm around, you can find me. You know I'm not around because all my posts will be shadowed. <laughs> but uh, if you if you see me, if you see my name in the group, then you know I'm around. You can reach me on the group if you want to talk to me on Facebook. Anyway, so this is a post made by a uh, Lindsay Stanton on the group, and uh, it is uh, paraphrasing somebody named Eric Pepin and the work that they have done, which is a bunch of bollocks. To quote my friends across the pond, um, uh, this stuff tastes almost as bad as this Malaysian sour mango. So my friend gave me these and it's literally one of the most sour foods in the world. Mm. Like, the thing is, I like sour food, that's why I keep eating them, but it's like, take the sourest gummy bear you've ever eaten, take away the sugar, give it the consistency of an apple, and that's kind of what these are like. But anyway, to get back on point, so I want to, I want to like uh, break this apart a bit. Uh, there's some really wonky ideas here, and it just highlights how much garbage is in this field, how much BS is out there. And it hits especially home for me because when there's garbage, when there's BS, it causes people to have anxiety because, you know, a lot of people are suffering from grief. 
and they're trying to figure out what's going on. What does all this information mean? And then some Yahoo comes along and tosses some random theory out there and wants people to believe it probably for no other purpose except to get popularity, get credibility, get likes. And the more edgy it is, the more controversial it is, they know that the more people, just for the sake of being edgy, will adopt the theory. If you don't think that's a phenomenon, just look at Flat Earth. How edgy do you have to be to think that airplane pilots are literally lying to the public as part of a grand conspiracy by some, by some Illumidonkey agenda to uh, conceal from the world that uh, we're actually living on a disk and space isn't real, it's a firmament, blah, blah, blah. So that's really edgy and you know it's kind of a cool thing that you can join a club, you can be part of this like cool in crowd that has this crazy belief. And I think that's why at, you know at, at the baseline level why it appeals to people. But it's not doing a lot for the advancement of the integrity of science and you know philosophy and all of this. So you can think of other edgy theories and be able to join equal little cliques and fan clubs. One is the uh, idea that I think it began as a joke like on 4chan and then people began taking it seriously which was that Australia does not exist. So Australia was a way to cover up for like British war crimes. They were actually in islands and they were like slaughtering Aboriginal Indians. And so they made up this whole theory that, you know, oh, we have this big, big island called Australia. And uh, look, and now there's, um, you know, now there's this prosperous civilization that built themselves after being prisoners. Yeah, right. And uh, obviously, it's Australia isn't real. Uh, there was a town in Australia called Townsville. How stupid is that? Who would name a town Townsville? What else do we have? Cityville? City town? Clearly, Australia doesn't exist. Well, if you get a laugh out of that, then um, this is another theory that's straight, straight out of those uh, categories. Reminds me a lot of this, except some people take this very seriously. And again, there isn't really any evidence, but you just have to take somebody's word for it. And you get to be part of this cool club. And in the process, scare a lot of people, cause a lot of grief, spread a lot of misinformation and fake news. Before I read this whole post, you're watching Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, where we try to grapple with these complex metaphysical issues. If you like this stuff, go down, hit that subscribe button, share the video, like the video. That's going to really help as I progress with this channel and hopefully get more eyes on these important esoteric topics and hopefully to get YouTube to begin recommending these videos more to people. That's kind of like my goal for 2020, get more eyes on this material. So any help is appreciated. So to continue. Um, so uh, let's read the post. So I, uh, Lindsay says, I've been reading some of Eric Pepin's work. A lot of it makes sense to me. And that's the kicker. You know someone's good at feeding you a bunch of BS if there is truthful information mixed in with the BS. That's how they get you. Okay. You want to get people believing in flat earth? then put out a bunch of like really positive philosophy and cool stuff and you know um, ideas about I don't know making money or success and then slip into the flat earth stuff on top of that and they'll be like well I, I gained so much value from this philosophy so you know maybe um, maybe I'll just take a I'll, I'll, I'll just take a second look at at this really ridiculous area because everything else is so good. And so this is a way to manipulate. It's also, my friends, it's a way that narcissists are able to manipulate us. I have the last bite of this super sour mango so I don't, so it doesn't go bad. Oh my God. It's like a, like it's good, but it's a little bit like getting punched in the face. Man. 
Okay, so, um, so this is also how narcissists manipulate people. So when you know people who are just, well, they have like some kind of NPD and they are feeding off of the energy of other people like a psychic vampire and they want to control people. And all of these tactics, sociopaths, narcissists, or um, what do you call it, like um, people with the cluster B personality type of things they do to people. And well, this is one way, is to make people feel good, provide value, do all these things that a normal, upfront, healthy-minded person would want to do. And then sneak in slowly all of the control mechanisms to begin taking over somebody's mind. That's how I've seen narcissists in this life operate. And it's a scary thing. And this reminds me of that. So a lot of it makes sense to me. Of course, a lot of it makes sense to me. This is how they manipulate you. However, I got to a section that has troubled me. He believes only 15% of humans have souls. What? <laughs> like, where does that even come from? Where does he get the 15%? I'm going to put a theory in of where the 15% comes from in a minute. The rest are soulless, just electricity in the brain. And these soulless people return their life experiences to the collective consciousness of the earth when they pass away, whereas the other 15% can continue, usually into another body, reincarnating as quickly as they can. So right away, this guy is... Um, well, he reminds me of another author who I've debunked on the Afterlife Topics webpage, uh, putting a lot of focus on reincarnation, clearly dismissing the real afterlife evidence of which there is an enormous amount of, which you can just, you know, I mean, there, I've obviously I have so many resources on this channel or on the website where you can learn about the abundance of real afterlife information. So just like a materialist, this Eric Pepit guy, has to uh, somehow discount the abundance of afterlife information and the prerogative is on him to show us why all of our experiences and all of the objective information is wrong so that he can promote just this no afterlife only reincarnation theory right and as well as the idea that almost everybody we meet are not real people uh, so let's continue. Lindsay says, this has subdued me quite a bit, mainly I think as I lost my mom last year, she wasn't a particularly spiritual person, so I'd imagine in Pepin's theory, she has just gone, not in another dimension or plane, just gone. It's a sad thought. What do people think? I don't, I mean, um, like, is it just irresponsible that, that people like this Yahoo go around coming up with these theories and then hurting people, hurting people who are grieving. Um, I just I think it's unbelievably irresponsible. And why submit yourself to some theory like this? Where is the evidence? Well, I don't know this guy's work. I haven't read the books. Maybe it's being misinterpreted. Probably not. This is very this is way too specific for me to think it's being misinterpreted. Um, so one commenter in the comments, if you go to the Facebook group, you can you know, read the comments, said that probably they're getting this idea because only 15% of people have NDEs, right? So 85% of people have cardiac arrest. They don't go out of their bodies and they don't have an afterlife experience. Um, so that means probably according to the, maybe, maybe we're just speculating, but maybe this is why this Eric Pippen guy thinks that everybody else is a soulless automaton. Let me also tell you about narcissists a little bit more. So narcissists, they would love the idea. To, to them, many people already are soulless automatons because that's how they can abuse and mistreat people and not feel that, that tinge of empathy that tells you it's wrong. Until they get to know you, until they favor you, until they've decided that they have favored you, then basically you are an NPC. You are a robot, a soulless zombie. So again, this philosophy just lines up, you know, with you know this kind of narcissistic idea. Then you, what you can use, abuse people, whatever, because they're not real. They're just a bunch of robots. Look, um, let's finish this up. Here's what it comes down to: people who are empaths, people who can feel the energies of other people, feel the thoughts from people, 
feel what they're thinking, know what they're thinking, preempt what they're going to say and what they're going to do, know that this, this, is, this is full of dish. Why? Well, for the most part, I'm kind of an empath. So if you take me out in public, I look at someone's face, I get a sense of what they're feeling, what mood they're in. Not like specific details of what, what they're going to eat for lunch, but like I know right away the mood they're in, the energy they're giving off. I'm kind of a low-level empath. There's high-level empaths who can get very detailed information. But the fact is... There are no soulless automatons. Even the sociopaths who seem like they must not have souls, even they have souls, but they're wounded, broken, malicious, violent souls that have built a construct around themselves to, uh, to kind of like be in a perpetual defense against pain. And so they built this exterior shell sometimes. Sometimes you'll feel like a shell, like there's a real soul, a real person who's buried underneath like 10 feet of mental concrete and somewhere in there is this broken husk of a person that still exists that's like the closest you get to this theory but even those people they there's still you know god god given entities souls consciousness created by whatever source consciousness yada yada it's just like all living beings. In fact, when we go into the realm of panpsychism and animism, even even this coffee mug has a you know a level of consciousness because it's also created from the same source energy. It's just not sentient intelligence like 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 we have, but it's part of that same rhythm, that same flow, and everything, every molecule has at its core maybe maybe some level of consciousness. And this is this is where we go into animism. Actually, idealism, I think, is the best, is, is the most accurate um, uh, flaw, the most accurate description of that philosophy. So, when you go into those subjects, we look, we know that things are alive, consciousness is real. This is somebody trying to make a name for themselves, trying to be famous, trying to be important, trying to be edgy, trying to get followers, all of that. I have no sympathy for people spreading fear and paranoia. Whoever this Eric Pepin guy is, um, I'm calling you out. Uh, stop spreading this fear. Stop spreading this paranoia. And frankly, get a life. The internet does not need you. The internet does not need more of this garbage. That's it for this video. Sorry if it was a little bit negative, but I see stuff like this. And it's part of what we do here is calling out the BS. And some people don't like it because they want channels are just pure love light positivity yada yada but in life sometimes you gotta you gotta fight back you gotta punch back especially when there's information that's hurting people it's causing pain causing people distress then it has to be called out so if you like this work if you think this is important i encourage you to help help us out and sign up as a patron at patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics we do special behind the scenes classes discussions all this kind of stuff for certain levels of patrons and also you can check out books like understanding life after death and the afterlife and beyond over at afterlifetopics.com that's it for this video more videos coming out more podcasts coming out so uh stay in touch and i'll talk to you guys soon